He plays the patriarch of the Pritchett family on Modern Family, which is still in season 10 entering, coming up uh, next month. One of the funniest shows in the history of TV, 9 p.m. Eastern, every single Wednesday, starting September 26th. Good to see you, Ed O'Neill, back here. Thank you, Rich. On the show. Good to see you. Now, you were telling a story as we were going to break about you were having lunch with David. This was, Again, I, I always love you coming on here. We talk sports, we no. talk life, and I never know what but is David, going on in David, your incredible uh, existence. But David, David, I've known you David. You were David Mamet, right? David Mamet. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. Yes, I've known David since 1980. Yes. Uh, I consider him one of my best friends. And uh, he told me this story though, and he, when they were doing The Untouchables, he wrote the screenplay and he mm. was directing a play in Seattle called House of Games. Yes. Low budget. Yes. And uh, um, Brian De Palma calls him. The director. He was directing uh, Untouchables with Sean Connery, De Niro, you know. And he says, Dave, you know, uh, Bobby's having some trouble with this one scene at the courthouse steps, but we, it compares ties to people. And mm -hmm. and uh, Dave says, that's not my problem. You know, I sold the screenplay. I'm, 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 I'm busy here. <laughs> so De Palma says, well, we thought maybe you'd, you'd give it a look, maybe give it a little rewrite. He says, uh, I don't have time. He says, well, you know, we thought maybe you'd do us this favor. He says, Brian, you know what a favor is? I pick your <laughs> kid up Oh, God, careful, careful. <laughs> Okay, that's what he said. I forgot. <laughs> this is live. I know it's live TV here. I'm sorry, it's everybody. Okay. But <laughs> it's David it's, Mammoth. I, though. I know it's a Mammoth story. I'm okay, so that's sorry. That's what he said. It's I pick your I pick your kid up from school as right. a favor. Right. I rewrite it. It's a hundred grand. Right. <laughs> I, I thought that was a funny so story. So which scene did he rewrite though? The, it was did the, re it was Al Capone at the steps of City Hall talking about ties. Okay. I don't wear, I wear a different tie every day. Why? So Mamet wrote the scene with him with the baseball bat. He huh? wrote all, he wrote the show, but they wanted him. And he said, well, oh maybe you should get a God. less famous writer to finish that scene. And he did they not. They said, no, we want you. We want your voice. And right. he says, uh, I like the scene, to be honest with you. And that's the way it went. And that's the way it went. It's the best scene in the movie. Oh, my word. Anyway, yeah, Dave. Ed, Ed O'Neill here on the Rich Eisen Show. Now, <laughs> you just uh, met Sean Merriman back there, correct? Yes. Right. And... You are as a, a boxing and MMA aficionado. aficionado. What do you think of Sean Merriman's uh, idea of going well, bare knuckle fighting? Well, I have to talk to Sean about it. I don't know. You know, I, he looks like a very impressive guy. Right. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to, you know. Right. But um, <laughs> boxing is a lot different than football. Right. You know, I mean, the, you have to know how to punch, first of all. You're exactly. And you have to know how to avoid punches. Yes, exactly. And... Uh, it's timing and sense of distance and, you know, and there's leverage. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the hips come into play and the whole, you know, there's a lot to it. Right. Jack Dempsey, you know, was 190 and would, you know, kill guys. Right. So, you you know, it's not just size and... Well, we've seen football players attempt this before, right? Yeah. Wh which ones? Well, Too Tall J Jones. I remember Too Tall Jones would box a little bit. And I think he kept his chin sort of like, almost yeah. like a golf ball on the tee. You yeah, know? right. You couldn't... Cause you, couldn't you can't miss hit. it. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, so, right. I, listen, I wish him the best of luck, but, right. man, you know, you're doing one contact sport. I don't know why you dabble in the other. Right. So, it, describe for me uh, a night where you're watching a fight in the Ed O'Neill household. What do you got for I, me? I usually watch them alone. You do? Yeah. No I kidding. turn down invitations to go to boxing parties. I don't like to be distracted by okay. conversation. Okay. You know, I like to watch it. Interesting. Okay. And uh, and if I and if I'm too invested in one of the fighters, I don't want to hear other things. So who who, who which fighter are you invested well, in? Well, you know, you it's look? funny cuz we have this Canelo fighter yeah. uh, fight coming up yes. with uh, with the Triple G. And uh Early on, I was a big Canelo fan. You know, I was much more, I liked him much more than I liked anybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, not so much. I, um, the, the, the drug failure stuff and then the, also the, I don't know, his attitude seems to have changed somewhat. He's arrogant. Okay. Uh, the Russian, I think, is, is more to my liking. Okay. Now, whether or not it plays out in the ring, I think the Russian definitely won the first fight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he didn't blow him out, but I thought he won it. Right. So we'll see. So when it comes on, you will be... I'll watch it. By yourself. By myself. Nobody else. Glass of wine. Okay. Is there any other sporting event that you take in like that, like that by yourself? Or? Uh, UFC. You know, I watch UFC, UFC usually okay. alone. So who is... <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, I think people quirky. would love to hang with you and, and you know, and, and have that glass of wine with you here. But well, that, yeah, one I could I could do a one. So who in the UFC are are you? Uh, have you taken a liking to there too, Ed? Ah, uh, lately. Hmm. I just saw a Brazilian kid, and I don't know his name. Okay. A fight night a couple of days ago. He looked very good. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You, McGregor's always entertaining. Are you so you know, when McGregor takes on Khabib, you, you're gonna? That well, should be an interesting fight. Well, how do you suss that one? I, out? Here's the thing. I'm gonna go with McGregor, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because I've seen the Russian Khabib mm -hmm. get rattled in there with one punch on the chin. I've seen him get hit and do that funny dance. Right survive it, mm -hmm. win the fight. But the guy that hit him on the chin that did the funny dance was not a good puncher. McGregor can crack. If McG he hits you solid, it's over. And you saw the way that he throws a dolly at a, at a, at a bus underneath uh, Barclays Center. Ed. You saw yeah, that? Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's out of hand, right? I mean, the whole thing is out of hand. The weigh-ins, uh, what is all that about? You know, I mean... They're not fighting at the weigh-in. What are they trying? But you know, that's always been the case, there, I know. right? Well, has it? I mean, maybe. I mean, we've you've since you've seen in 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 the history of of fights where you'll you'll get something that seems to be staged. Although I know. I, I don't think like him that. throwing a dolly well, at a not, bus was not staged. That's a little carried away. When, but I remember Dempsey. I met Dempsey years ago in New York, and I said, uh, "You always seemed friendly mm -hmm. at the weigh-ins," and he said, "Why not?" We're not fighting at the way in. And plus, we're just, we're getting paid. We're fighting for money. Right. I don't know these guys. The professional. Yeah. And I said, well, don't you feel like you have to get amped up? Mm -hmm. You know, like create something? Sure. He said, um, everybody gets the same thing. Ed O'Neill here on the Rich Eisen Show. Modern Family starting season 10 coming up uh, Wednesday, September 26th, 9 Eastern time, uh, right here on the show. So, um, who was the best football player that you ever lined up with or against, Ed, when you were playing back in the day and showed up at Steelers training camp? Well, the best player I ever played against uh, before I got to the Steelers mm -hmm. was uh, Roger Staubach. When did you play against him? I played against Roger Staubach when I was at Youngstown State University, and he was at Pensacola Naval Station doing his six-year bit. Wait a minute. This is a great story, right? Uh, yeah. You know, he, you know, they do that. He graduated from Annapolis, won the Heisman, mm -hmm. went down there, and played football for six years. And they recruited, they had guys like all-American wide receivers from SC and you know, mm -hmm. UCLA mm -hmm. playing on his team. They had no line. Yes. It was like a tag football game. But he was the best I ever. I played against him two years. So you're playing against the Pensacola. What Naval was Station. Naval Station. Yeah. And then out trots Roger Staubach? Yeah. That's not fair. He was their quarterback. But it's not and these fair. were high scoring close games. Really? Because they didn't have a running game. They didn't have a good defense. They you know, not well, they had a couple of good players. Did you rush him? Did you get him? I Did you I, take I, him down. I tell you the truth. I I rushed him. Mm -hmm. I got a hold of him. I spun around one time on his leg and he and he he just kept wiggling his leg free and then he threw a touchdown pass. I hit him illegally out of bounds once <laughs> and got, got a 15-yard penalty. And they had a guy, their, their middle linebacker was a guy named Lynch, who was a, was a naval boxing champion. Yeah. Who I think his brothers played, one of his brothers played for Kansas City. Okay. The Lynch brothers. Sure. And he wanted to kill me, you know, because they loved Roger. Of course. Know, so you almost started a brawl by hitting Roger Staubach out of bounds? Yeah, I was just so tired of chasing him. And, he, you know, he just stepped out of bounds, and I thought, no, I'm... I've been running 25 yards now, you know. Yeah. I just kept going. 15 yards on Ed O'Neill. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I know Roger now, you know. Okay. And, I, don't, and I was about, that was my next question. Very nice guy, you know. As you know, he's a very sweet guy. So, yeah. Uh, my, 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 I'll never forget this moment. I was emceeing the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony the uh, one year because Chris Berman was, was do, does yeah. it every year. Yeah. He was introducing the uh, owner of the Bills. Ralph Wilson asked him to be his... Uh, the, the person who introduces him. And this is back when they had to make a speech. Now they just do a video. But at any rate, so Chris, did, I, I was doing this uh, MC, And one of the, I don't want to say who, somebody was going on and on. One of the introducers was going on and on and yeah, on yeah, so yeah. long to the point where I was able to, as MC, get up from my position and walk off stage and get a drink because it was hot. 
So I get off stage and get a drink. And Roger Staubach, who had introduced Bullet Bob Hayes earlier in the day, was told to go five minutes in his speech to speak about the posthumously Bullet Bob Hayes. Yeah. And being the Navy man, who you know, he went five minutes on the dock. off. And off. And he was now coming up to me, complaining to me as the host about somebody going on much longer. And he did five minutes. He goes, Rich, you know, it's how discipline. fair is that? Discipline. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, Roger Staubach is bitching yeah. me out. Yeah. And the yeah. five-year-old in me is like, <laughs> oh, my God, Roger Staubach is bitching me out. Cincinnati <laughs> Roger Bacon. Yeah. Where he played high school ball. Unbelievable. And then I remember when he was at Annapolis and they, they had that drive for five. Remember those? they had those great jerseys? Yeah. It said drive for five on the back to beat Army because they had beaten Army four in a row. And you took your shot at Roger Staubach. I took my shot at him, but I'm telling you, he had a different gears, you know? Sure. He's Roger Staubach. Tall and lean and, and faster than he looked. And so you'd kind of cut him off at the pass, and then you'd just go to that other gear, and you'd miss him. And so who was Ed O'Neill here when you showed up in tr Steelers training camp? Who, who was was Mean Joe there? Was all those guys there? Was yeah. Blunt? But I never, you know, he was defense. I was defense. Right. Um, so nobody really on offense. But who was, I, I mean, guess. I mean, they were all tough guys. I mean, it was, sure. you know. It's like, it was like the Hall of Fame coming to life in that uh, spot. Well, no. Okay. It was the next year, really, that they really got the recruiting going. Okay. You know, that was all the. All the guys that made it, those Super Bowl teams. Are you saying you're the dead weight? Is I think I might have been dead weight. Yeah. <laughs> and how did uh, Chuck Knoll cut you? What did he say? He called me in. You know, okay. I went to the office mm -hmm. and uh, brought my playbook, so I knew you know I was going. And uh, he couldn't have been nicer, by the way. And and you know he was complimentary. You know he said you know look you're a tough kid, but you know you're trying to learn the position. I had never played. We didn't have outside linebacker mm -hmm. in the college I played for. So it was the only position I, re you know, reasonably could have played, mm -hmm. and I just didn't have. He didn't have time. He said, "Look, it's my first year too." So he said, "I can get you down with the Eagles. The Eagles are desperate, and that would have gone, a, you know, rental car straight down eighty, you know, to the." Yeah. And I and he said, "But it's got to be. You got to tell me right now." And I said, "I'm done." You knew it that you didn't want to go play no. for the Eagles. No. Why? I don't know. It was a it was a spur of the moment. This I had knee problems. I was and I was I, to be honest, I was sick of football. And uh, I said, no, I'm done. I'll do something else. Well, it all worked out, Ed. Uh, Ed yeah. O'Neill, Modern Family here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, let's let's. Uh, I've got a few facts here of you that's on the internet, Ed. Of oh, your wait, career. Let me tell you one funny story. Oh, sure. One quick one. Is, it, is, it, is it clean? Did I tell you this at Sofia Vergara's wedding? It's okay. clean. Okay, good. Yes. Sofia Vergara's wedding. Okay. At the reception. To Joe. Manganello to Joe. Okay, a guy comes over to me and says, I, I, "I work for a guy who's your biggest fan." I said, "Well, where is he?" He said, "He's over there." I look over. I said, "That's Franco Harris." He said, "Yeah, it's Franco Harris." I said, and I just went like this. Come here. By the way, he looks like he can still play. Yes. Oh yeah. He comes over, and he's like a little kid. I mean, he's like, Mr. O'Neill, mm -hmm. I'm your biggest. I said, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute. D did you know I was a rookie the year before you got there?" <laughs> He says, yeah, I know all about that. He did? Yeah. Because I didn't think he would have, you know? Yeah. He said, yeah, I do. And I said, okay, so let me get this straight. I got cut pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You won four Super Bowls. And I'm your biggest fan. That's right. <laughs> he, was so, he was such a great guy. Man, I anyway, love Manganello inviting Franco Harris to his wedding. How about yeah. Franco showing up? Well, of course. Why wouldn't you? I bet it was very there nice. There were a lot of people at that wedding. It was uh, I bet. It was a pretty interesting. It was a four-day wedding. What? Four days. Four days. I'm gonna say it was a four or five million dollar affair. <laughs> well, it's a good thing they pay well on Modern Family. Yes. Uh, okay, so I've got some uh, celebrity true or false for Ed O'Neill. Please hit it, Mike Del Tufo, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Celebrity true. Keeping it real. Or false. First one up. You have a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. True or false? That's true. No kidding. So Did you, you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. I knew I you, but I know Brazilian. Oh, there he's showing it right there. You are yeah, kicking no, somebody's behind belt. right there, man. That's Horry and Gracie. Okay. So you are, are you, you could take anybody out right now, Ed? Oh, no. You sure? Come I just on. don't want to lose. Okay. You know, my whole thing is defense. Okay. 
So if I came at you, I you'd... don't know what I would do. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably try to get you by the gurgle, though. Ev okay. Eventually. Okay, very good. Second one, uh, Ed O'Neill. You taught you, you taught social studies in Youngstown, Ohio, before you got into acting. True. So you 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 handed Chuck Noll your playbook, and then went to teach social studies. I went to Florida, and I was a bellhop in a hotel down there. Okay. With my roommate, my roommate was a guy named Sammy Angot. Mm -hmm. whose father was in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. Boxing Hall of Fame, Okay, Sammy Angot. And uh, he was my roommate. He pitched short relief for the Pirates. And we were he was cut. I was cut, so we were roommates down in Fort Lauderdale. And then you taught social studies? Then up to Youngstown, and then I got, you know, it, it was a substitute teacher job right. in the inner city. And I ended up doing a, a bit with that. Okay. You know, it's a long story. But right. So then my next fact is your first on-screen TV credit. This is a Wikipedia situation. Is all my children? Is that a true story? It's probably one of them because I was in New York and I was getting little soap opera gigs to pay the rent. So who are you as the soap opera? I don't know. I was always like the guy who kidnapped the whole show. Or, you know, <laughs> come uh, on. Yeah, yeah. You were the I was bad never, guy. I was never the father. I was never the you know never the lawyer. I was always the the truck driver, the professional killer. You know, something like that. You were the heavy? I had a guy like Mr. Stubbs Mr. would be me. Okay. Mr. Stubbs. Mr. Stubbs yeah. was you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you were the only cast member that appeared in all 260 episodes of Married with Children. That's true. I was the only one in every show. The Iron Man of Married with Children. I was the Iron Man of uh, Married with Children. What's your yeah. favorite episode of that? Oh, my God. Ed. You know what? I couldn't say, but I, the one that pops to mind is when I played The Godfather. Mm -hmm. I did the Marlon Brando thing mm -hmm. with the little potatoes. Mm -hmm. It was funny. I thought that was funny. So you don't have a specific favorite episode of modern? Of, no, of, uh, I mean, of you know, I did Children. a great. We did a great one with Terry Bradshaw, where they dedicated the stadium. They were going to do it to me, and then they found mm -hmm. out he had gone to school there oh, for yeah. a week. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see that one? Oh yeah, yes. I remember that one. Oh man, I just did one. You know, Terry just did Modern Family. Yes. Uh, yes. It aired. It aired like yes. about the jury thing. Yeah, and well, Peyton Manning was on too. Yeah, Peyton. Peyton was great. I heard, I heard, because, you know, we we, we, we run in uh, with Manganello and yeah. Stone Street. I heard that nobody could get in an edgewise with Peyton Manning, that you kind of boxed everybody out when he was on the set. Ed. <laughs> well, Is that my a true show story? Was, my, my, my story was with him. Sure. So it was, you know, it was all. And, and I had done that, you know, I told you I did that timeline, right? You know that yes, show, Timeline. Uh, on, on, I narrated his comeback from the next surgery. Right. That documentary, which is very good, it by is the way. A, it is very good. I mean. It's okay. an hour long, but so, but good. so you didn't box anyone out or to try that. that I you don't kept think Peyton. so. Who told you, that? Eric? I'm just. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to tell any tales out of school. Oh, but Peyton it, was great. Okay, it it might have it might have run with uh, Stone Feet. It might have. Peyton, uh, Peyton said to me before we started shooting, he was nervous, which surprised me, because he's so great in the commercials. And he's know? done Saturday Night Live. Yes. He's done live. And I said, I said, why? Why are you nervous? Right. We're, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a ball. Right. He said, well, I'm I'm playing another character. I mean, I'm playing. I'm not playing me. I said, so what? He said, well, I'm not, who, who am I going to be? I said, who else can you be? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're 18. Uh, and last one, upon reading the script for the first time, you knew Modern Family would be a winner and the show would last for at least 10 years. Is that true or false? It's true that I said it's a hit show. I didn't know how long it would last, but I knew it was going to be a hit show. Why? I don't know why. I just It just read to me like it's a hit show. Right. And it seems like you guys are having as much fun as ever. It comes through the television oh, we, set. we really. I mean, it's the luckiest job. It's it's a great job. Everybody gets along. It's it's um. Mm -hmm. It's like a, the perfect storm, you know. Right, being on being on a, a hit show for ten years and enjoying it. Right. Well, I, I love it. I love watching it, Ed. I always love our chats when you come here. Oh, thanks, Rich. Thanks. I do, too. I'll always... That's why I keep coming. I appreciate that, Ed. That means <laughs> that means a ton. Uh, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Ed O'Neill here on The Rich Eisen Show. Check out Modern Family when it returns to ABC on September 26th in its usual time slot. Don't you dare move. Back with your phone calls and more here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.